Welcome to our onboarding series for V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we're going to explore all the tools in V-Ray that help us light our scenes. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the project files from the video description below. V-Ray offers a variety of lighting options. You can create different kinds of lights. With rectangular lights, we can easily simulate soft boxes. We can use spherical lights or spotlights, and we can also use manufacturer data with the IES lights. We can also convert geometry into a source of light using the mesh light. On top of that, when it comes to recreating complex environments, we can always count on the dome light. There also is a procedural way for creating realistic lighting using V-Ray Sun and Sky System, which can recreate any time of day in just a few clicks. Okay, let's look at each light that we have at our disposal and then see how we can combine them and create different light scenarios. First, we'll make a rectangle light and explore its settings. To see the effects of our changes, let's start an interactive rendering. We can change the color of our light using either hue, saturation value, or pick a temperature. Further down, we have a control for the intensity of the light. You can even change the shape of the light to a disc if you prefer. Tweaking the directionality slider will determine how focused the light is. Zero means the light will spread in all directions equally, and one means creating a laser-like effect. If you don't want the light source to be visible, we can make it invisible from the options rollout. Next up is the spherical light. You'll see that many of the options are the same as the rectangle light, like color, intensity, and size. This is a great tool for mimicking light bulbs in your scenes. The spotlight is perfect for creating focused beams of light. Just like the other lights, you can control its color and intensity. Plus, there are a few extra settings. The cone angle will determine how much the light spreads, and the penumbra angle and penumbra falloff will dictate the softness of the light bulb. We have the IES light next. This needs an IES data file to work. IES files describe how light spreads from a source, and many major lighting manufacturers offer IES profiles for free. Usually, the intensity is integrated into the IES file, but we can always override it from the light's parameters after that. The Omni light is another option. It emits light in all directions from a single source. The Omni light represents an infinitely small source of light that spreads its beams in all directions equally. As well as the color and intensity, you can tweak the softness of the shadows using this shadow radius. Sometimes, we might want a specific shape to emit light, and we can do this using the mesh light. Once we create it from the asset editor, we need to select the geometry we want and apply the mesh light. After that, we can tweak the intensity, color, and all the familiar settings that we saw in other V-Ray lights. The most straightforward way to create convincing lighting is using the V-Ray sun and sky system. It is a procedural way of generating skies using V-Ray sky texture inside the environment slot and Rhino's documented sun, which is present by default. From here, we just need to enable the sun position parameters where we can tweak the angle and rotation of the sun. That way we can recreate pretty much any time of day. We can also adjust settings like intensity and size. An intensity value of one is the default and it most closely recreates actual sunlight, so leaving it at one is recommended. Tweaking the size is more of an artistic choice. Higher values will smooth out the shadow cast by the sun. There are quite a few more parameters in the sun and sky settings. The most interesting probably is the procedurally generated clouds. Let's enable them and see what they do. From here, we can tweak things like density, which controls the size of individual clouds, variety will uh, give more interesting shapes, and we can also add different layers of clouds by enabling the cirrus amount option by setting a value higher than zero. We can also tweak the height and thickness of the clouds. Now let's take a look at a slightly different approach to lighting. We're going to use a panorama HDR image loaded in a V-Ray dome light. The image mapping should be set to environment spherical. Let's start IPR and see why that is important. As you can see, there are some clouds in that image and the light is soft. Now, if we change the rotation, the image will be horizontally rotated. And this will end up with a different position of the light source and clouds. The easiest way to find more HDRIs is to use the Chaos Cosmos library. From here, you can pick from a wide range of different skies and studio panorama. Just pick the ones that you like, download it, and import it into your project. 
From here, all we have to do is apply it to the dome light and make sure the mapping is set correctly. Now it's just a matter of finding the right angle for the HDRI rotation and we're all set. There's another way V-Ray can help us light our scenes. Let's open the Light Gen menu and look through the options we have available. First, we are prompted to select whether we are lighting an interior or exterior scene. Then we can choose if we want to use V-Ray Sun and Sky or a HDR image for the lighting of our scene. For this example, we'll stick with the Sun and Sky. The next step is choosing how many different light scenarios we want based on the angle of the Sun. After we click Generate, V-Ray will start creating a variety of light scenarios that are shown as thumbnails. Just click the one that you'd like to load the sun position into your project, along with the right camera settings. You can also save this setup for later or to share it with others. If you prefer to use HDRI lighting instead of the sun and sky, you can use your own collection of HDRI images or ones that come with V-Ray. Then we get to pick how many different lighting styles we want to explore and the variations in rotation for each. I have already done this so I can just load my set of data directly and pick from a variety of lighting situations for my scene. Now, let's take a look at a finished scene to understand better how to use V-Ray lights. In this scene, we used a combination of HDRI lighting for the environment and a few different artificial lights. The most important lights are the sphere lights inside the building which create a nice contrast between the dark blue outside and the warm light inside. Since we used a few large lights to light up the inside, we made them invisible so we don't see the actual lights. We also used mesh lights for the light from the garden lamps and the LED strips under the stairs. There are a few other lights in the scene too. There's a spotlight in the pool that adds some detail to the water and the toys floating in it and a rectangle light under the palm trees, which adds some detail and interest to the final shot. Now you should know how to set up lights in your scenes using V-Ray for Rhino. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.